so in order to solve any graph problems we have to know traversal techniques and the first traversal technique that we are going to learn is bfs traversal technique now what is bfs it is nothing but the breadth first search technique okay you must have heard about this if you have read trees so this is the first technique that we are going to learn and in the next video we will be learning something as dfs we'll talk about dfs in the next video but as of now let's focus on bfs in order to solve any problem you have to know the traversal technique so you cannot skip this video so what is bfs as the name suggests breadth very important term breadth first search now usually graphs are of two kinds one can be the one based indexing graph which is this one if you carefully see n is 8 over here and the graph numbering starts like the node numbering starts from 1 or it can be zero based indexing where the graph numbering starts from 0 that is okay you just need to make sure you write the code according to that but the logic remains same so let's come back to uh, bfs so what is breadth breadth first search so this term is very important breadth it kind of signifies level wise traversal as well this is also called as level wise traversal but yeah generically the generic term is breadth first so let's understand so usually they will be telling you a starting node okay so assume i say you over here the starting node is one so i'm saying that this is the starting node okay now what we say is okay this is at the level zero that is what we generally say this is at level zero and then you say this, these guys are at a distance of one so you'll call them as level one then you say these guys are at level two and then you say this guy is at level three so what you do is in breadth first search traversal first you visit the first guy that is the starting node and you write that so that that is something which you have written then you go to all the guys that are on the next level so this was at the zeroth level so the next level will be nothing but first so i can say this is at the first level and this is at the first level now in the breadth first breadth first search traversal you can either traverse this and then this or you can either traverse two and then six that is completely your choice so i will decide to travel two six you can travel six two as well that is completely okay so this is also done now the next level is level two and you know these all guys are level two correct so what you do is you say okay again you can write three four seven eight you can write something like eight seven four three that is completely your choice as long as you are traversing all the nodes in the level wise fashion we are completely okay with it so it is like three four seven eight so see this is level zero this is level one and all of these are level two so the level two can be traversed in any of the ways but they should be traveled together okay next will be level three and this is level three so i can say this is level three so this will be the uh breadth first bfs traversal of this particular graph but if the starting node is one very very important if the starting node is one what if i change the starting node so let's quickly change the starting node and understand bfs in depth so assume i tell you that the starting node as of now is six okay so i've changed the starting node remember this this is the starting node and this is at level zero if this is at level zero you cannot say this to be at level zero no this only one node can be at level zero so you write six at level zero now if i ask you which it which is at level one then what do you do is you say this is at a distance one this is at a distance one this is at a distance one so all of these guys are at equivalent distance very very important all of these guys are at equivalent distance so thereby you call them as level one level one and level one again you can travel one first then seven then eight that is your choice so i'll decide to travel one seven eight so this is level zero this is level one you need to understand the distance distance breadth it goes equivalent in the breadth so it was here it went equivalent in the breadth that is very important to understand okay next if i ask you the next level that's two so for this this is level two this is level two 
And are there anyone else who is level two? I don't see. So I can say, okay, this guy is level two and this particular guy is level two. So you can again write something like two and five. So this is level two. Perfect. And it's time for level three. So obviously one, two, three. So this will be three. So maybe one, two, three. This will be three. And are there any other? No. So this is three. This is three. So there are two guys who are three. So it's very important you travel breadth wise, breadth wise, and everything depends on the starting node. Depending on the starting node, the traversal will change and you will always travel in the breadth wise manner. In the breadth wise manner. I hope that is clear. In order to do a BFS traversal, there is an initial configuration that you need to start off with. So whatever is the starting node given to you, what you do is you clearly take a queue data structure. Now, if you don't know queue data structure, please read about that. You take a queue data structure. Queue is nothing but first in, first out. The guy who goes in first gets out first. So the initial configuration says I'm going to define a queue data structure and that will always contain this particular guy. Remember this, that will always contain this particular guy starting node. And there is another thing that you need to do. You need to create something as a visited array. Okay. And this visited array is something which is very common in all the graph questions. And over here, if you see the node is numbered till nine. And since the graph is one based, what you'll do is you'll create this visited of a size 10. Okay. Please make sure you create of a size 10. So this is like 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So this will be the visited one. And whatever is the starting node, you go over there and you mark it as one and everyone else will be marked as zero. So over here, please understand this one means this guy is already in the queue. Whenever I say someone has been traversed, someone has been touched wait, mark that as visited. So this will be the initial configuration. Initially a queue which contains a starting node, initially a visited array which will be of size depending on its one based or zero based you can decide and the starting node will be traversed so thereby it will be marked as one. This is going to be the initial or the starting configuration in a BFS traversal. Now what is the next step that you will do? Whatever is in the queue, you will start taking it out, start taking it out, start taking it out till the queue is not empty. Remember this, keep taking out, keep taking out till the queue is not empty. Okay. So whatever is at the uh, queue data structure, I take it out and you'll print it. So assume I print this. So this is printed, right? This is printed as a BFS traversal. Now, very important, whatever you take out of the queue, one you took out of the queue. So if you remember this graph, you would have stored this in some data structure and which data structure was that? That data structure was adjacency list. Do you remember? Yes. So what will be the adjacency list for this particular graph? Can I say for zero, it will be an empty data structure for one. It will be storing this two and six. Remember this. Okay, let's write for the next for three. It will just be storing two. So please write that. Sorry for two. You have to write in the next step for two. It will be storing one, three and four. So let's write one, three and four. Next will be for three. Let's check out for three. For three, it's just storing two. So let's uh, store two in it. Next will be four. For four, it is having five and two. So for four, it will be two and five. For five, for six, for seven, for eight. Similarly, create the entire adjacency list that I have already taught you in the second video. So kindly create this and after that we can start off with the BFS traversal. So 
So this is how the entire adjacency list will look like. Now, whenever you take the first element out and you print it, what you do is you go to one and you say, who are your neighbors? I, I repeat, you ask, who are your neighbors? Okay. And how will you know who are its neighbors? If you remember well enough, in the graph, you can see that two and six are its neighbors. Two and six are its neighbors who are at an equivalent distance. So if you remember, this guy stores all the neighbors. Remember in the second lecture, I told you. So who are the neighbors of one, two and six? So what you do is you take two, you take six. First take two, put that into the queue data structure. Okay. And mark it as one. Next take six, put it into the queue data structure and mark it as one. Perfect. Done. So first iteration of one is done. So it is very simple. Let me repeat. You took out one. You basically went to its neighbors and you put that into the queue and marked it as visited. Next time, take out the next guy. So I'll take out the next guy too. Do the same thing on this two as well. Go to two's neighbors. Who are two's neighbors? How will you know? Again, two's neighbors are one, three, four. Very obvious. One, three, four are its neighbors and that is stored in the adjacency list. So two's neighbors were one. But remember this, one will not be put into the queue. Why? Because you've already traversed one. Because you've already traversed one. And how will you know that? Because, because, yes, one is already marked as visited. So you already know one has been touched or traversed. So you'll not take one. Instead of that, what you'll do is you will simply uh, omit one and you'll not put that into the queue. Let's check out the next. It is three and four. So you'll just take three and you'll take four and put that into the queue and mark three and four as visited. Perfect. This is done. Next, you take the next element out six. So six is there. Again, do the same thing for six. Who are six neighbor? One already visited. Seven not visited. Nine not visited. So you take seven and you take nine and you put that into the queue data structure. At the same time, mark seven as true, nine as true. Perfect. Done. Six is done. What's the next thing? Three. Let's take out three. Who are three's neighbors? Just two. Already visited. Nothing to do. So three is also done. Let's take the next one out. Four. Who are four's neighbor? Two. Already visited. Five. Take five. Put that into the queue. Mark five as true. Perfect. Four is also done. Next. Take seven. Who are seven's neighbors? Six. Visited. 8 not visited. Take 8 and put that into the queue and mark it as visited. Perfect. Next. So 9. What, what about 9? For 9, there's one neighbor 6, but that is already visited. So done. Next, take 5. For 5, who's the neighbor? 4 and 8. And if you carefully see 4 and 8 are already visited. So no need to do anything. Five is also done. Next, take eight. And for eight, if you see five and seven are already visited, no need to do anything. So this is also done. Apparently, if you see, this is your BFS traversal. Yes, this is your BFS traversal. Zeroth level, first level, second level, and the third level, if you carefully see. So we were successfully able to print the BFS traversal of a particular graph, right? Now it's time that we check out the code. So I hope you have understood the entire explanation. Now it's time to check out the C++ code and the Java code. So what I'll do is I'll write the C++ code and I'll explain every step. And the Java code is on the left so that you can just follow for every corresponding C++ step, what will be the Java code. And we are going to follow the same structure of code. So you'll not face a problem. So generally uh, what will happen is you'll be given uh, something like vector int where you have to store the BFS and return and always you'll be given the number of nodes and you will be given the adjacency list. You don't need to create the adjacency list. They'll be giving you the adjacency list in almost all the problems. Now this problem uh, states uh, a directed graph, but we will be coding this for an undirected graph and then I'll tell you why the same code will work for directed graph as well. Okay, so what is the initial step if you remember? 
So first, let's uh, quickly check if this is a zero-based indexing graph. So if you see, it is a zero-based indexing graph because the graph is starting from zero, right? So what you will do is, you will just create an int visited array of n size and probably mark everything as this. And you know, the initial configuration will be having zero and we will have a queue, okay? And in the queue, you know, it will, it will be having the starting node. Done. Now what we did, we always took out everything from the queue till there was something in the queue. So can I say always take out like till it is having something, till it is having something, till the size is like still is not empty. Just take it out. And I can say the node that is taken out, like it will be q.front and we can just see q.pop. So this will make sure you always get the node. And can I say if I have to store the VFS, uh, apparently I can just uh, do it over here and I can easily store whichever node comes out. That's that, that is what gets into the BFS done. What is the next thing that we did? We always took out the node if you remember and we checked out its neighbor nodes, right? So who is storing the neighbor nodes? Yes, the adjacent Celeste. So for this node, can I say if I do auto of IT of adjacency node, what does this mean? Whenever I write adjacency node, I'm saying index node that adjacency element will be a vector if you remember the vector adjacency list if you remember the list if you say index that index is storing a vector and that vector is storing all the neighbor elements so you have to just iterate on them so these are the neighbor elements it you just need to check have they been previously visited if not you say okay let me visit them very simple and let me put them into the queue as well so that in the next step, they can be taken into the BFS. Once this is done, you can say this is my answer. Once this is done, you can always say this is my answer. Okay, now let's quickly compile this and check. So if you see uh, the compilation is successful and let's quickly now submit the code and check if it's working fine. And then, so it's time to understand the space complexity and the time complexity. Space complexity is very simple. A queue, a visited node and a BFS. Uh, list so b go of 3n which is almost equivalent to b go of n and the adjacency list is given to you so you can just omit this and what about the time complexity the time complexity is very simple now if i go and analyze the time complexity i know one thing for sure if you look at the code in the code this is running and you know every time a node will come and go into the BFS. So a node goes once into the BFS. I know for sure goes once into the BFS, right? So if a node goes once into the BFS and it runs on all its neighbors, can I say it runs on all its degrees, runs on all degrees. So can I say it's something like while Q not empty, and then there's a for loop and this for loop runs for all node and it will run for the number of degrees of that node because if this guy has three neighbors it's going to run for three neighbors all degrees so can i say this for loop is what it is running so thereby thereby i can say the time complexity to be the queue itself will run b go of n times because there are n nodes and this inside guy will run for total degrees and if you remember the total degrees we have already concluded as twice of edges this was done in the first lecture the total degrees because for every node we traverse all the neighboring nodes so this will be the time complexity for this particular guy so guys i hope you have understood the entire bfs algorithm just in case you did please 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 make sure you like this video and if you're new to our channel what are you waiting for Man, just hit that subscribe button right away. And with this, I will be wrapping up this video. If you haven't checked out our DP series and the SD sheet, the links are in the description. Make sure you check it out. With this, let's wrap up this video. Let's meet in some other video. Till then, bye-bye. Take care.